So oh, the Jolt data just came out. We were expecting 9.4 million job openings. A number below that would have implied some finally softening in the labor market. A number above that implies a strengthening labor market. What did we get? Oh, 10.1 million job openings and a revision of the prior number up. This data combined with what the Fed has just started talking about is all kind of leading to this potential for another hike. Uh, of course, there are some other catalysts coming up, including Friday, the jobs report, prices on my courses going up tomorrow evening. So check those out, link down below, investing courses on stocks and real estate, as well as the income course on how to make more money featuring AI and productivity. That'll be really cool. Uh, and then of course, CPI. But let's talk about what the Fed just said and considering what just happened with jolts? Well, the Federal Reserve is back at it again, and now it's almost as if they listened to my video yesterday, which is really scary because maybe I just shouldn't have said it. But yesterday, we got numbers that, that real estate was actually doing quite well. At the beginning of the year, real estate prices started ticking up again. We've known this. We've been tracking it every single week almost. We've been talking about how, geez, you know, real estate prices fell in between May of last year, bottomed out in December, started recovering in just the last five months here. Now home prices year over year are down maybe 3% on average nationwide. If you look at Miami, Tampa, they are positive. And you look at Austin and Boise, they're still quite negative over 10%. But one of the concerns we brought up yesterday was this idea that, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh -re remember how there were three parts to the inflation fight? And this is a problem. This is something we're going to have to pay attention to. And you know me, I'm, I, I will always flip-flop if I need to. But one of the things that's actually concerning uh, is that you have three aspects of the inflation fight. You know this already. This should be redundant to you. Goods, disinflation. What's the next one? Should roll off the tongue, okay? It should, it should roll off the tongue. Housing, okay? And then, what, what's, what's the next one? So if this one is, hint, hint, housing services, then what about this one? How about everything except housing services? So, services x housing is what we call it. Okay, cool. So these three things are what we expect to help bring inflation down. By the way, the good news is I'm not counted in CPI. So when I say something like, hey, check out the programs of building your wealth link down below before the price increase on June 1st, which is in like 36 hours at the time of this recording, <laughs> we're not counted in CPI, so we're good. If we were counted in CPI, because you're locking in the best price guaranteed, you can email us uh, if that's ever not true and give you a price adjustment. Uh, but because the price goes up over time, if, if we were counted in CPI, it'd be short in the spay. But anyway, so goods, we know that disinflation is happening. Housing services, we've been told that we expect uh, this disinflation to come because leading indicators of rents have fallen. Nationwide rents have gone from about 1970 bucks down to about 1900 bucks, which is good. You've actually seen some softening in housing services which is great. That takes a year though to really show up in the year over year data. That's how roll off works. That's how base effects work. Now, Jerome Powell said this is in disinflation. We expect this to be in disinflation, but Jerome Powell has also said we have not yet seen services X housing disinflate. And part of that is because it takes wages to soften to see this come down. Now, uh, ordinarily, you would have to see the jolts data come down. So ordinarily, you would see job openings data come down, and you would see the unemployment rate go up. So far, we haven't seen the unemployment rate go up. You've just seen sort of some of the job openings fade away, which is good. It's a sign that maybe some of that sticky inflation and in services will slowly go away. The problem is, and we talked about this yesterday, the problem is, what if all of a sudden rent prices and home prices actually start trending up again? Well, what you do then is you actually suggest, uh-oh, we could, instead of seeing the expected disinflation in housing services, we could actually see reinflation in this segment. Now, I, I don't, <laughs> that expanded to real estate inflation, which is kind of exactly correct, but 
Let's not have it auto expand. There we go. So you can see reinflation here, which would be bad. And we talked about that risk yesterday by looking at the FHFA month over month data and the uh, S&P, um, uh, or rather the Case Shiller Core Logic at 20 city uh, home prices, which all came in a little hotter than expected. And so there's this red flag here that we touched on yesterday. And just now, Federal Reserve Governor Michelle Bowman showed up this year, said the following, quote, while we expect lower rents will eventually be reflected in inflation data as new leases make their way into calculations because of the lag that it takes to get leases to show up in CPI data, with home prices leveling out recently. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, here. The residential real estate market appears to be rebounding with home prices leveling out recently, which has implications for our fight to lower inflation. She just said this today, just a few minutes ago in Boston. She says, uh, essentially, that, hey, wait a minute. What if this could cause a reanimation of inflation? And this reiterates Loretta Mester's comments as the Financial Times reported this morning, uh, but not just the Financial Times, other people have already commented it on quite a bit. Uh, and, and Loretta Mester just recently here said the headlines uh, uh, suggesting rate cuts aren't that, quote, compelling. In fact, she sees, quote, no compelling reason to stop hiking interest rates. In fact, she says, quote, I would see more of a compelling case for bringing rates up and then holding for a while until you get less certain about where the economy is going. A lot of this could be driven by the fact that the banking crisis is somewhat turning out to be a little bit of a nothing burger. Originally, the Federal Reserve was considering pausing more because of, or, or considering a pause for June as more likely, because of the banking crisis. And it was seen that the banking crisis was really a catalyst that contributed maybe somewhere around 50 basis points of rate hikes. Well, if there's no banking crisis, that means we potentially need to get to about five and a half percent instead of the five to five and a quarter where we sit now. That would be two more 50, uh, 25 BP hikes. The futures market right now is pricing in about a 62% chance of a 25 BP hike with a 38.2% chance of a pause. As far as July, it looks like we're most likely with a 54.2% chance to pause. And then September, you're sitting at 42% to pause uh, at, uh, at that 5.25 and potentially start pricing in your first cut from 5.25 to 5. So markets are definitely leaning towards favoring the idea of, of one more rate hike. Uh, which stands in contrast with what Jerome Powell just told us. Jerome Powell told us, hey, we're at a level that is sufficiently restrictive. And that's a way of him saying we've, we've reached the level that we need to get to. Uh, he's also convinced other hawks like Neil Kashkari to pause, though Kashkari not voting, uh, or sorry, Kashkari is Bullard's not voting right now. He's the other bull. He, Bullard wants us to get to five and a half. <laughs> um, Loretta Mester uh, also uh, in the conversation, the Financial Times mentioned, uh, suggested that uh, Mester still says she could be swayed by incoming employment data due on Friday, as well as the next inflation report. She says, quote, I just think we may have to go further. At this point, I don't really necessarily see a compelling reason why we wouldn't want to take another small step to counter some of that really embedded, stubborn inflationary pressure. We're getting to the real hard part here of how we assess trade-offs. Different policymakers will have different views about how they are assessing things. So you're starting to get that dissension at the Fed, that lack of unanimousness. Now, remember, we have jobs data coming out on Friday. Uh, that's in two days from uh, today. That's on June 2nd. We're going to have this jobs data. Uh, the jobs data going to be a big deal because we are going to look for, hey, is the economy trending towards recession or is the economy still booming? Whether or not that's going to be good news or bad news is probably all going to depend on the average increase in average hourly earnings for employees. So we expect non-farm payroll to come in at 195,000 jobs. 
Private payroll is 164. We expect the unemployment rate to actually tick up from 3.4 to 3.5%. Average hourly earnings to move uh, up 0.3% month over month and year over year 4.4%. Obviously, if we get a miss on that average hourly earnings, could be a red flag. And then, of course, on the 14th, we're going to be getting the inflation report. Sorry, that's on the 13th. We'll get the inflation report. On the 14th, we'll have the Fed. Inflation report on the 13th is currently projected to come in at 0.3 month over month. And for a uh, core month over month, we're looking at 0.4%. If we could come in soft on all of the inflationary data, we will probably get a pause. So this is the cycle where there is actually a real possibility of a pause. Uh, previous cycles, it's always been clickbait that there would be a pause or a 50, you know, or, or higher than expected. You know, it was always very well telegraphed what the Fed would do. And the market basically wrote it in with an 80% chance of certainty what was going to happen. It's a lot of uncertainty right now. These next two reports will dictate it, as Loretta Mester said. And yeah, there is some risk for that real estate firming up we're seeing. Though, uh, there's also the question of, is just matching last year's level of increase is going to be enough to actually create uh, any kind of uh, renewed inflation of rent increases? Hopefully not, because obviously a lot of people are frustrated about how many rent increases there have been. Now, I want you to know this, when it comes to AI, time is what's going to make you money. And if you can prove that value to an employer, you'll always be able to be employed. So this is another way of making sure that you don't get replaced 